Folks of the weather, come on in, grab a seat, sit down, grab a beverage. We got a uh, video to talk about here about a couple pattern changes and potentially some severe weather across the United States. That's what we're going to talk about. No time for fancy graphics. I'm actually in the process of making some new ones for this channel. And so those will be coming out soon. But we're just going to make a quick video here. Right now, what you're looking at is the temperature anomalies. And this is 850 millibar. This is just off the surface. The reds are above average temperatures. And the blues and purples here are below average. White's kind of average. If you look at right now, this is... Uh, well, let's go to Wednesday, actually, and Wednesday the 11th. You can really start to see the, the temperatures really start to warm up across the east and uh, eastern United States here. Cool over here in the west, but that's going to change as uh, the jet stream starts to change. What you're going to notice here is the jet stream is starting to move south as we get to, towards uh, fall here. That's going to start to cause a lot of fluctuation in temperatures. You're going to get a bunch of temperature swings here over the next uh, several weeks and also the potential for severe weather. There's a lot of uh, warm southerly air coming out here from the Gulf. That's going to bring a lot of warm air for much of the United States, especially the central and east half. The jet stream is also starting to dig to the south, and what's going to happen is that's going to overlap, and you're going to get some severe weather setups in the northern plains, maybe even farther east. We'll uh, look at that in a second here. This is Wednesday, and you can see Thursday, and to Friday, here's your low pressure system, one of your first ones, pretty powerful and very cold behind it, only in a small area though, but very good indications of warm, moist air out ahead of it, especially up in this area right here. There, there's going to be a lot of uh, warm, moist air kind of getting wrapped around behind it. That could bring some severe weather for much of this area right here, and we'll go over that in a second. But really, overall, you get Saturday, Sunday, Monday, temperatures 5 to 20 degrees above average in that area. Starts to get above average across much of the United States around Tuesday, the 17th, 18th, and it continues. That's a good indication of a potential severe weather setup. Very warm moisture going all the way to Canada. Very cold air behind it. Could be a powerful storm system as we get towards later in the month. Pretty far out there, but look at the pattern change again as we get towards late month. The jet stream looks to really dive to the south. Very cold air, very warm air out here. This could be indicative of a winter pattern setting up. And uh, you, sometimes you get your patterns to set up as early as September and October, and they can kind of sometimes stay consistent throughout the winter. We'll have to watch that. If you haven't seen my winter forecast, click the link in the description or up here. I'll probably post it, and uh, you can view that. Uh, I just released that a couple days ago. So let's look at the jet stream real quick, and you can watch this thing. It's a lot further south now. Here's Tuesday, Wednesday, and you can see here's your trough. You had that warm, moist air go up to the north. This uh, flow up here in the just below the jet stream here is going to overlap that. That's going to cause wind shear for thunderstorms. It's going to blow the updrafts away or the precipitation away from the updrafts. That's going to continue to allow the storms to grow and potentially uh, get severe weather. And that is really going to be in this area. You're going to get your severe weather and your storms just on the east side of these uh, troughs, particularly where there's divergence. And so Nebraska and the Dakotas and in Minnesota, you're going to have some severe weather potentially Wednesday, Tuesday through uh, maybe even Thursday. And Thursday, you can see this thing moves to the east. Minnesota. And then uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you got this uh, kind of westerly zonal flow with uh, probably south winds underneath it, southwest winds. And then you got another trough out here. There could be some severe weather setups in there, but maybe some MCSs. And then as we get towards next, next weekend, Thursday and Friday, we got another trough coming in. There could be severe weather, like I was saying, with that, and maybe even pretty far north with how warm the, uh, the temperatures were. And then uh, as we get towards next week, look what happens here. This jet stream really starts to get rocking and starts to really dig south. That's indicative of potentially a strong storm system and very cold air. But again, this is really far out. Things are going to change, but I'll definitely make a video if this looks, starts to look consistent as we get towards the later in the month. Now let's look at the severe weather potential. We're going to look at is the instability here. This is measuring instability. What you need is you need lift, fronts, 
and you also need that jet stream to be overlapping for your severe weather typically. And so where that jet stream was, it was typically in the northern U.S. When you get instability to overlap that good moisture and there's enough lift, you can get some severe weather. So here's Tuesday. This is right now. You got some severe weather in Nebraska with that jet stream overlapping. Wednesday, potentially a repeat setup here in the Dakotas. Best area of lift are going to be right around there. Southeast, south central, south Dakota, maybe north central Nebraska. All hazards possible. It was looking like tornadoes potentially as well. A couple isolated tornadoes in there. Then as we get towards uh, Thursday, there might be enough warm air that gets wrapped around this thing. This low pressure is pos uh, pretty powerful. It's going to suck up some warm, moist air. You might get an arc of severe weather here towards Minneapolis, uh, maybe Des Moines, all the way out to North Dakota. And along that arc, if you can get enough instability, you might have uh, severe weather, especially briefly as it's getting going where it's in that pocket of instability. It's probably going to move away from it, but initially there could be some severe weather, maybe some tornadoes as there's enough shear. As we get towards later in the week, this is Sunday the 14th. Looks uh, like potentially some severe weather out in the central plains. The jet stream was mostly north, uh, so it doesn't look as uh, tornadic, but maybe some isolated hail wind MCSs in the northern plains this is going out to next wednesday and thursday and there you go there's a uh, thursday next week that's definitely something to keep your eye on as you had a lot of s more moist air you had a very strong trough cold air behind it probably a nice low pressure system or a couple in there and uh, you're probably gonna get some good severe weather up in uh, the dakotas if this stays consistent pretty far out but this is indicative of a uh, severe weather outbreak and uh, then we get towards friday and Saturday and really what happens is when you get the jet stream to really move south like that cold air to move south you're going to kill the instability there's going to be cold fronts that ride into the gulf with north winds behind it that blocks the moisture from coming up north and it'll start to shut down after that but I think over the next couple of weeks as the pattern starts changing across the United States to a fall pattern you're going to get several waves of severe weather particularly in the central and northern plains one other thing we're going to look at is the precipital water. This is going to measure the moisture in our low pressure systems. This is Wednesday, and you can see, okay, the, the dark colors here, the blues, purples, that's very good moisture. It's measuring kind of the average moisture in a column in the atmosphere. And plenty of moisture here, okay, anything really above 1. Uh, 1.25 or so. That's pretty good. 1.5 is uh, typically good for severe weather, classic supercells. And yeah, you're going to get some uh, some good moisture there in uh, South Dakota, over overriding with shear. That's going to give you some uh, severe weather. As we get towards uh, Thursday, probably enough uh, moisture up in the Minnesota region. The question is, will we get enough back here near the low for the North Dakota? We'll have to watch that, but definitely enough moisture here. Along the cold front, maybe less severe weather there, but the greatest severe potential is going to be near that arc there. Friday, Saturday starts to clear out. Not a ton of moisture to deal with through the, throughout the next week. And then uh, as we get towards uh, next weekend, Thursday and Friday, I think this is Thursday actually, that severe weather setup I was talking about, plenty of moisture goes all the way to Canada. This is pretty far north. Uh, but we could be dealing with a nice little severe weather setup from the central to the northern plains here next week. That moves to the east. Some lingering severe weather probably possible across the Ohio, maybe in the northeast valleys, the northeastern United States in Ohio Valley. So we'll have to watch that. Then look at this thing. We actually got a potential hurricane. We'll have to make a video for that. It's actually a hurricane that moves up, looks pretty powerful, and hits Miami towards next Friday. So I'm gonna have to look into that, maybe make a video for that. That just goes right up into Miami. Very favorable waters, probably enough time to recover after Dorian. So that could be a powerful hurricane. So we'll have to watch for that. But yeah, that's plenty of moisture and wind. When you get those isobars packed together like that, you can be dealing with some pretty powerful winds and low pressure there. And then after that, that trough just, just shuts out all the moisture as you can Go back to that. And you can see that moisture gets shut out towards the 25th. 
So one more product we're gonna look at is the uh, composite reflectivity. And I'm gonna look at the NAM 3 cam. We'll look at uh, Wednesday and Thursday real quick. We'll look at the northern United States. And we'll see what the type of severe weather <clears throat> we're gonna be dealing with here. This is Tuesday right now. Some severe weather out in the northern plains, central plains, Nebraska, supercells, maybe some clusters, potentially some tornado threat out in northwest Nebraska. That moves east, and then uh, Wednesday, you know, potentially some upslope, some severe weather complexes moving to the east. There's a nice jet stream here, plenty of instability here, moisture moving up. If this uh, interacts, you could be dealing with some pretty good severe weather here. Whoops, in uh, South Dakota. And this is the 3 cam, so it's not always that accurate, but it does have a nice complex that moves through. Anything in this area, especially, could be severe. I would say moderate chance in there and maybe a slight chance kind of around that. So that's what that's looking like right there. So that's just a quick brief overview of the next uh, pattern change, a couple pattern changes, and a brief overview of the severe weather. Now I'm probably going to make a video of that hurricane here tomorrow or something like that because that's certainly interesting. We'll have to watch that. So if you like today's video, click the thumbs up button, comment below. If you like severe weather or winter weather better, I'm kind of curious to see what everyone likes on this channel. And uh, check out the winter forecast. I'll pop it up right here. Subscribe, and I'll see you soon.